Well, here we go. We got that one. And I'm going to push record on the screen too so I get audio, okay? So I have my Bible study right here. We're starting with page one, which the first paragraph has many errors. So when you read yours, know that there are many errors in it. Um, but it's only in the first paragraph. After that, everything runs smoothly. I looked through the rest of the study, and we're doing good. <laughs> so, unless you found any oopses in there. Um, there is one thing um, where I have, I choose to believe that Moses wrote it as it was not refuted in the word. Um, one of the ladies in the study actually put a note on hers. Thought I had her note down with me, but... If she had made it here tonight, I was going to ask her to say it out loud. But basically what she mentioned was it doesn't actually say that he wrote it. When Jesus talked about it, all he did was mention that Moses gave it to them, which meant that the laws that he was discussing, Moses had said. So I can't actually use that when I rewrite that section. <laughs> so that part won't be in there, ladies. <laughs> All right, so let's begin with the um, study. I'm going to turn my volume up on here so that we can hear you better. Okay, there we go. Hopefully that's not going to kill you. Is that killing you? No. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, at least I don't notice it. Okay, good. I can hear you now. Okay. Okay, so, um, so we began by reading in Genesis at home this week. We read the chapter 1, 1 through 31. And then now we're going to discuss uh, what, do, what God did and how in more detail, right? Okay. Um, we'll take turns because normally when we have a bigger group, we'll take turns answering the question and then we'll discuss if we had a different answer. Okay? Okay. All right. So I'll start with number one unless you want to. Okay. <laughs> All right. Why do you think God took the time to look over the work, the work he had done at each day? Um, personally, <laughs> I started numbering. Um, I almost started writing a, a, a sermon. <laughs> I went, no, 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 no. You're not writing a sermon on this. You're just answering the question. So I had to cut it a bit, but... Um, first of all, I said that he was a perfectionist because God works in perfection. Um, even though we aren't perfect yet, he is perfecting us the more that we learn about him, which is one reason why we study the word of God. Um, my number two point was <laughs> he made sure everything was done before deciding to call it a day. And... Um, I actually started to answer the next question in my answer there because he kind of did it in a way that we can learn from his example. Um, how to complete a task. So when I think when we do something and, and it's really good, we know that it's good and it feels good when, we, when we've completed it. So what we want to do is mimic God in that. So what we we want to be able to read the word and know that God did this thing and, and almost visualize it the way that the word is written so that he sat back and he said, hmm, all right, that was good. All right, let's start tomorrow now. <laughs> so that's my opinion of it. Do, do you have anything to add? Okay, good. Yay. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, that's for another chapter. I have some side notes here. <laughs> Sorry. I had stuck them in with my notes because in my Bible, there was this really cool section on... Um, oh, it's, it's chapter 121. It has 
some really cool stuff, and I think what I'm going to do is, is um, I saved a copy of it, so I'm going to send it to everyone. But it has in here um, the days and what was, see if I can put that on the YouTube thing first, the days and what was um, created on that day. I don't know whether you can see it or not with the clarity, but but so I didn't use this when I wrote my notes, so they are all over the place. But <laughs> do you want to do number two or number three? Since I kind of went over part of number two, which number two is how can this be a model for us? Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. I think it might go into another question where you asked, where it said, like, why did he just, like, why didn't he go poof? Why did he, like, take his time doing it? Mm -hmm. I think um, it's about being, like, intentional and being careful and perfecting it, like you said. That's good. I like that. I hope you guys heard that. <laughs> I know. I'm like, let me know if I need to, like, talk louder. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, all right, so number three says consider the order of creation. I kind of like how the writer did on this because she kind of overlaps the, each question. Yeah. So you're reflecting on it and then thinking about it some more. Okay. <laughs> Good writer here. <laughs> Alright, consider the order of creation. Was this perhaps a logical choice? Consider our human needs, air, water, and food. In this answer, sorry, in this answer, <laughs> write your answer as a chart. And you don't have to write it as a chart, but if it's easier for you to do it that way, to, to be able to understand it, it helps to compare and contrast to what the need was um, that was filled for us even today. Um, so let's just go through the, the different things that were... Um, created and then um, we can discuss the things the things that were um, whether it was in a good order for it to be then and how it helps us okay okay so the first order um, on my Bible chart here it says day one was light and darkness which yes that was on day one i also wrote down the heavens and the earth so so he in creating the heavens and the earth he created dark and light to create the first day which um what i wrote in my notes is that the the form had to be created i mean he had to have heaven and earth or there would be you know, nothing. So, because it was void before that. Um, and then I also wrote for day and night that the days had to have a beginning and an end. So there had to be light and dark. So, yeah. yeah. So do you have anything to add to that? That's good. That's good. He like created everything was like from what, well, like the necessity, most big necessities were to like have an earth or have like everything. And then, um, and then what you needed in that earth and then like what you needed on that land and kind of like narrowed it down to, until he made I like it. that. Yeah. That's good.
I put, um, yeah, mine kind of meshed together too in my notes because I ran out of space. <laughs> but I, I basically put to see the creation and give it a place in the universe, day and night, um, noticeable. Um, and then the air to breathe and the water to grow the plants and the oceans. Um, and the seas to separate so that there's land matter on the earth, you know, instead of just being a ball of water. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, so what did that, what day are, what day did that get us to? <laughs> uh, you're talking about the water and land. That was day three. Day three, yeah. So, then, what's next? So then on day four, he made, like, the sun, the moon, the stars. Right. So why do you think that he created those? I think that kind of goes with the, um, with the having light and dark. Um, I don't know if there's more to it, but just like in general so that we have days. But right. I don't know if there's like more. And, and the way that, like the way that we know now how the universe works with the, the planets revolving and the, you know, everything. <laughs> How it's got to be lined up just so for the weather and everything to work out the way that it does. It has to be lined up just so. Yeah, in cooperation with each other. Yeah. So, with, with that, I think that's why it was created as it was created was because it had to be. To, it was like the logical next step. Yeah. Because, you know, like, the sun brings warmth. Like, if we had no sun, maybe we, maybe we could figure out how to see, but we can't, like... Photosynthesis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's good. Um, I may have to turn a light on in a minute. Because <laughs> the sun is starting to go down over there. Um... All right, so then day four says, there were three things on that. Oh, the stars was the other one. So the stars, which we know now, those are the planets and um, various other things floating out in space that reflect the light. So that's all part of the whole keep it moving so that our world can revolve and we can have day and night. It's kind of cool how God did that, isn't it? <laughs> Um, so the next thing is birds and fish. So God had created the water, so why not add something to it, right? Yeah. And then, um, I think that the purpose of it mentioning separately the birds and the fish and then the animals and, I'm reading the tiny words, humans, right? <laughs> <laughs> tiny humans! Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that the birds and the fish, if you think about it, I mean, there were so many of them to create that they would take a full day. And then, I mean, man was Adam, Eve, you know, <laughs> a little quicker. So all the animals and then Adam and Eve. Yeah, that worked out pretty good, right? Um, okay. Um... So, when, I don't know whether I wrote this into this one, but I, when I was studying on it, I was thinking about the fact that when God created man in the beginning, he told him to, um, to rule over all the earth. And that included over these things that he created, you know, the water, the land, the fish, the birds, the animals, he was in charge. And um, I thought of that about how today a lot of people are like, oh, no, we should put this before us, you know. And yeah. we have to remember, no, because God put us in charge. Yes, we have to take care of it. But we put human over this yeah. other created thing. And we forget that sometimes because we're a compassionate people. And we think, oh, this poor, you know, whatever it is, plant, tree, you know. <laughs> I'm thinking, 
I'm thinking back a few decades, and you guys are all too young for this, but, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so when he created each thing in order, it made it so that there were things already there when man was created to see these are the things. And then God had, which we'll learn about further on when it, the funny thing with Genesis is it repeats itself. Yeah. While we're reading through it, it says all these things, and it says, oh, so this is the detail of what happened for that, and this is the detail of what happened on that one, and this is what happened because of that one. So, you know, it's a lot of fun to read, and what sometimes, well, like in Canada, where I grew up going to school, we got to read Genesis 1 every year. We got through the first chapter, because in school you got to read the Bible. That, that was the first thing of starting our day, was re praying and reading the Bible. Well, we never got past Genesis 1, so I knew how the, the earth was created, but that was it. You know, I didn't really even know who God was, but I knew he created the earth. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to turn on a light, which means I'm going to move. So, one moment, please. <laughs> Which means I just turned my back on my screen, and that will look real fun. <laughs> I'll have to uh, cut that part out. <laughs> I know how to do that. <laughs> um, since my film crew is not here today. <laughs> um, although, she could come through the door at any moment. Now we can actually see the words. Isn't that amazing? Um, so where were we? The lights. The lights. Oh, yes, the lights in the, in the heaven. Well, I was just saying, let there be light. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was dark. Yep, yep, that was funny. Okay, yeah, because we already talked about the lights in the heaven. That was the stars. Yeah. And then, um, it, it's, we um, pardon me? We went through all six of the days. Yes, we did. And then what happened on the seventh day? Yes, he did. Why do you think he rested at the end and he didn't just rest every day? What do you think? I, I feel like I've thought about it, but I haven't thought about it recently. Um, it's important. It is. It's very important. He waited till the end and then he took a day off. He completed his project first because I think... It, again, that's an example to us that we can complete our project, then take the break. Don't keep taking breaks while we're doing it because we'll never get it done. You know, it would have taken more than seven days. No, <laughs> we could still be waiting, you know. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, seriously, I believe that, that God completed the tasks that he had planned to do and then said, this is good. Yes. And so I think like that's a good example and like okay like have like for example for the day have all your tasks and don't like you can take like you know like a little break but like don't like stop really until you're done because then you get it all finished. And then also like that feels good to have finished everything you had to do for the day. And so Seeing if I can get you on the screen while you're talking because <laughs> this is good. <laughs> Hello. Mm -hmm. Like you said, like, if you take too many breaks or, like, it just, not only does it, does it take longer, but, like, you know, sometimes, uh, at least for us humans, like, it takes, it sometimes, like, can be discouraging or, like, we forget about it or procrastination kicks in. Mm -hmm. um, but for sure, getting those things done, it feels great, too, because then you don't have to worry about them and, you, like... And I guess, like, that's more, like, the human aspect, like, is the way we are, but, um, but, yeah, also taking that break is important, too, you know? Yeah, yeah. Not burning yourself When off. you complete it, take the break. Yeah. Yes. That's, 
that's what I think a, a good takeaway on that is, is that, that as he completed, then he said, okay, each time that he completed, and we'll get to that in a minute too, um, about it being good, but each time as he completed it, he said, okay, that's done, and went to the next thing, that's done, went to the next thing, and when he was all done, he said, this is very good, and he took his break. <laughs> So, um, okay, let's look at, oh, sorry. go ahead. It's a little hot. My connection's not a hundred percent. So like it just froze. And so I missed like a second of what you were talking. So just in case you don't hear me. Okay. Cause it's freezing <laughs> in and out. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's fine for the most part. It just happened once, but just in case it happens again. Okay. Hopefully we won't so lose sorry. contact. <laughs> If we do, you'll have to watch the lame Bible study video that I'm creating. <laughs> it's not, it's not really lame, right? Okay. All right. So, um, number four, take notice that God spoke things into beginning, he spoke things into beginning or to being. How can we use this in our lives today? Think about what type of an example he was giving us. He could have snapped his fingers, but yet he breathed life and he spoke things into existence. So you started to talk about that, Angelica, about that yeah. earlier. So I'm going to let you elaborate on that one. in what he was creating and how he created it and the timing of it. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that's why he didn't just poof it into existence. Um, I also wrote that um, where the question asked, uh, what type of example is he trying to give us? Or um, maybe just God spoke things. And speaking things into being, I wrote down that we have a lot of power in, um, in our words and in the tongue. And so like just the way like, he spoke things into existence. We can speak things into existence ourselves. Um, and just, I think, like, a big thing in this chapter, which I was realizing is, and we'll, as we, like, continue on the next questions, another, like, big theme is, like, power. Like, how much power we have. Um, and so, like, and a lot of us, like, don't use that power, like, to the way, like, God wanted us to use it or to, like, the extent he wanted us. So or don't believe we have that much power or don't realize we have that much power. And so, like, I think it's important, like, that we speak things into existence, like, when we feel low or we feel um, any kind of, like, when we, when we feel like, you know, like, like this isn't going to happen or whatever the situation is, like, speaking things into existence, like, I am going to have a great day even though I was, like, feeling really low or, or I am going to get, um, I am going to, I don't know, like, whatever it is, like, that you're hoping for, like, speak it into existence, and it just keep doing it, and it will end up happening, and God's timing, and then also, like, the power with our tongue, like, good and bad, but in here, talk, it's, like, talking about good things, and so, like, just being aware of that, and realizing how much power we have. That was very just good. Just like God had the power to speak everything into existence, mm -hmm. we have the power to speak things into existence. That was really good, and I'm really hoping that that's showing up on this, because that was really good. Um, you covered everything I had, and then some. <laughs> so, good job. Um, if any of you that are watching the video have something to add to that question, feel free to um, comment below, and we will read it, and we will reply. Um, okay, so, number five. As... He went through the step by step, creating our world. Sorry, I'm. <laughs> I had. While you were talking, I snitched an asparagus. It's kind of caught in there. So. <clears throat> so, um, as he went through step by step, creating our world, Father God made provisions for each thing to reproduce itself in some way, and for for them also to help one another in existence. What did he create to help man other than woman? 
This is a hard one. <laughs> And I put, um, I put down, in addition to those things, I put animals to help work the fields so that they could plant more and multiply the plants. Um, and also I put um, water to water the plants a little bit if needed, but also to drink because God made us needing water. So we what? had water to drink. Um, yeah. And then I also I also just added the plants and pretty much what you said, <laughs> so that was that was good. So see we're getting through this we're gonna get done on time. <laughs> <laughs> I I keep checking in case somebody else comes in the Zoom room. So if you're running late ever and you want to get in on the Zoom, it's gonna be open and I will let you in at any time. So please feel free to join. The link is in your email, so check it out. <laughs> Okay, looking at the following words, what do they mean and why do you think God chose them? Um, the three words are subdue, dominion, and firmament. And they can be found in Genesis 1, verses 14, 26, and 28. And it happens to be in the opposite order of those three. <laughs> I know, I was looking for them and I was like, wait, I don't see it. And then I happened to go to the very end. And then I was like, oh, there it is. I, I had to laugh while I was doing the study because I was like, oh my goodness, I forgot I put them backwards because I wanted us to read through them all and not just go, oh, yep, yeah, that's it. Okay. Oh, yeah. You know, I wanted it to be, you know, read it all and then figure it out. So. For sure. Okay. So what do you have subdue meaning? I wrote uh, to conquer, to bring under control. Perfect. Good job. That's what I wrote. Put be in charge or control and conquer it. And then I put we are over all things. Um, even eventually for what we needed to eat, we end up being over the animals eventually too. Um, not in this chapter though. <laughs> yeah. um, but so we had the plants to eat. So man was put over the, the plants in order to grow them and eat them. Um, that's part of it. I mean, there's a lot of different things that you can do with the plants. Yeah. Um, and then Dominion. I wrote, uh, in charge or to rule over. Yep, that's what I have also to rule and, and be in charge of. Um, a firmament. This is the fun one. I actually didn't even realize this word was in there. It's the atmosphere. Um, a simple, a simpler way to put it. Yes. Yeah. I, like I put atmosphere in the sky, um, the planets, the stars, etc. It's that atmosphere that's around it. That's the whole firmament, the whole thing. Um, because he talks about the firmaments in the heaven in different chapters in, I mean, different books of the Bible. They are mentioned, the firmaments in the heaven, um, when they're referring to the stars. So, um... As we go through the study, it, it'll get a little harder. This is a pretty easy one because it's the first chapter. But each um, installment of the of the study will get more difficult. And um, some of the things we'll have to do real solid word studies on um, to, to really truly understand it. Yeah. So, so if this seems pretty easy right now, that's why. <laughs> it's because we're beginning. We want to get used to the idea. Um, okay, so whom did God put in charge over everything on the earth, and what was 
said thing to do with it. I changed the word. Because <laughs> I'd give it away. So what was he to do with it? Uh... And he has a generic term. Ooh, no. <laughs> she didn't finish her homework, people. <laughs> well, this one's... Okay. Just to take care of it, right? Mm-hmm. He put him over it, and he was to take care of it. Um... I'm going to read from, because I highlighted some in here to read, all right? All right, so in, in uh, Genesis 1, verse 26, that's where I'm going to begin. Um, I think that's right, yeah, that's the right one. Okay, then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle... Um, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth and God said see I have given you every herb that yields seed which is on the face of the earth and every tree whose fruit yields seed I'm gonna wear my glasses next week um, to you <laughs> it shall be for food also, to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. And it was so. Now, this is really important because in the beginning, it was all greens. <laughs> you know, it was everything was vegetables and fruits, and that's what, what we had to eat in the beginning. Um... So then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And um, in reference to this, 